Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm going to hold off on uh, starting to introduce our speaker um, until a few more people have filtered in because uh, this does take a minute or two for the room to uh, reach everybody and I don't want anyone to miss anything. Okay, so um, I really want to thank you all for taking some time this afternoon to be with us. I guess for some of you, it's still morning. So good morning, good afternoon to everybody. And welcome to Fear Free Dermatology Diagnostics, What Can I Do Differently for My Patients with Michelle Rosenbaum, DMD, DAC, DD. I'm Christy Keith, Senior Communication Strategist for Fear Free. And before I introduce our speaker, I do need to take care of just a few housekeeping items. First, we'd like to thank our friends and Fear Free sponsors at Zoetis Pet Care for making this webinar possible. We'd also like to thank all of you for making time for us today. Um, now, I, I know there are a lot of questions about CE. CE is available for this webinar, but it is only for those of you who are viewing it live. There is no CE for anyone who's watching the recorded version. For the live attendees, I'll be sending an email immediately after this presentation that will contain a link to the survey you need to take to get race CE. So in other words, you should be getting this email within 30 minutes or less of the end of this webinar. So if you don't receive it because the survey is only open until Monday afternoon Eastern time, if you don't receive it this afternoon, please email me at fearfreepets at gmail.com right away. Don't wait until tomorrow. Email me right away so that you'll have the opportunity to take the survey because once it's closed, the window on getting CE is also closed. Um, when you are taking the survey, in the final question, there is a link to download a CE certificate that you can fill in with your name after you print it out. It's really important that if you are unable to print at the time that you access it, that you save the URL where this PDF file is so you can go back to it because the survey won't let you take it a second time. You won't be able to navigate back to it through the survey. If you have any trouble with that, you can also email me at fearfreepets at gmail.com. One more thing, you need to make sure you provide accurate contact information and complete the survey entirely or race will not process the CE. Even though you have that certificate, your credits won't count. So please be sure your contact info is accurate, that you don't typo it, um, and that it is an email address where you can be reached. Um, and the survey will close on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern, so please take it as soon as you receive the email. It'll just take you a couple minutes. And one last time, sorry to be so redundant, but fearfreepets at gmail.com is what you can email to get help from me. Don't use the regular fear free customer service email because they won't be able to help you. They'll just forward it to me and that will slow us down a little bit. And the recorded version of this webinar will be available within around a week at fearfreepets.com slash webinars. Uh, one last little point, because this webinar is only half an hour long and it's during the workday, we won't have time for questions at the end. Uh, and uh, we will be having two more follow-up webinars in the dermatology series. Um, I believe those dates are September 5th, maybe? Um, you will be seeing a mail with the actual dates uh, in it. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Michelle Rosenbaum. After four years, Dr. Michelle Rosenbaum, sorry about that. After four years of private small animal practice, Dr. Rosenbaum returned to the University of Pennsylvania and completed her residency in dermatology and allergy, obtaining board certification from the American College of Veterinary Dermatology. She then continued as a lecturer in dermatology at Penn for three years. Dr. Rosenbaum joined a multi-specialty referral practice in Rochester, New York, where she practiced for eight years before joining Zoetis Pet Care as medical lead dermatology in 2006. 
Dr. Rosenbaum is, of course, a fear-free certified professional and has lectured extensively to veterinarians nationally and internationally. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Rosenbaum. Please take it away. Thanks, Christy, and welcome to everyone, and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to learn about dermatology and, and how fear-free practices can really help us in the diagnosis and treatment of these really challenging cases that we see every single day. And in our previous webinar, we talked about how itch can cause, and it really may cause suffering, anxiety, and stress in our canine patients and their pet parents. And studies in mice and in people show that anxiety and stress can actually weaken the skin barrier. And this increases the skin's permeability to allergens and may lead to an allergic flare. We also learned about how itch can cause a roller coaster of emotion, affecting the special bond between dogs and their families. And the key to successfully getting your patients and their owners off this itchy dog roller coaster is getting patients on a treatment path that provides fast, effective and safe relief. And once the pet and their pet parent get relief, the owner is crucially more likely to pursue a diagnostic workup to find that all important cause of the pet's itch. And we'll talk about how we can use fear-free principles in designing a diagnostic and long-term treatment plan to reduce fear, anxiety, and stress in these itchy dogs and their pet parents. So pet owners are looking for innovative and unique therapies that are effective and work fast from us. And antihistamines made for human upper respiratory allergies are just not effective for treating allergic itch in most dogs. The International Committee on Allergic Diseases of Animals, or ICADA, in an evidence-based review put antihistamines in the group of drugs likely to be of little or no benefit for acute flares of allergic dermatitis. And they stated that they might provide a small and limited benefit in some dogs. And here we can see in this study that pretreatment itch scores for cetirizine or Zyrtec and placebo were similar pretreatment and 14 days post-treatment. And these ineffective therapies can lead to the emotional roller coaster of stress and anxiety for pets and their owners. The same ICADA group review supports oral steroids as likely to improve clinical signs of dogs with severe or extensive atopic dermatitis. And we know this, steroids work, um, but you know, the most common side effects of steroids are polyuria, polydipsia, and polythagia, which can be problematic for some of our pet owners. Two targeted options to help manage allergic skin disease are Apoquel and Cytopoint. And these treatments target specific cytokines important in the allergic disease process. So remember, Apoquel is a Janus kinase inhibitor. It works by inhibiting the function of the cytokines that really drive allergic inflammation and pruritus. And Apoquel reduced allergic itch and dermatitis as effectively as steroids in an Australian head-to-head -head clinical study. And here we can see this pit bull mix who was very red and very irritated when he came in before Apoquel. And here we can see that same dog two days after Apoquel where he's much less red and inflamed. So Apoquel is not only gonna control the itch um, starting within four hours uh, with complete control of that itch within 24 hours, but it's going to also reduce the inflammation in the skin, which is important too. It's out of the system in 24 hours or less, which makes it really nice for stopping and starting during our diagnostic tests, such as food trials and flea control trials. We can give Apoquil to your patient first line, and this gets the itch under control really quickly. And again, as I said, we can stop it and start it for itch control while we're trying to decide what is really causing their itch. Is it fleas? Is it food? Uh, is it a summer itch flare due to high pollen levels? Um, it can be stopped and started, which is really nice. And the most common side effects of Apoquil in short-term studies were vomiting and diarrhea. Here's the Apoquil important safety information. It's a good idea to periodically review uh, the ISI for Apoquil on the label so that you can determine if it's right for your patient. 
And remember, it should be used in dogs 12 months of age and older and not in dogs with serious infections. So here's a case, this is Toby, and he's a lab who would wake up and scratch all night long, as you can see on the left. He would rub his face on the carpet for at least two hours, and he was so itchy that he would rub his face until he was bleeding, and there'd be spots of blood all over the carpet. And the owner would wake up and hear his scratching, and both she and Toby were really suffering, and no one was getting any sleep, and they both may have had a lot of anxiety and stress because of his allergies. And on the right, we can see Toby after Apoquel the next morning, after receiving it about 24 hours before, and now he's sleeping through the night and he's much more comfortable. And you can just see the, the look of relief on his face. Um, so that he, at this point now, it's important that we don't necessarily just give Apoquel and nothing else, but we have to put him through this diagnostic streamlined workup so that we can really find the underlying cause. And Toby was found to have atopic dermatitis. But this owner and this pet are going to be more likely to go through that diagnostic workup once they've gotten some relief. So work with your pet parents to help them decide which therapy is best for their pet and their own needs and lifestyle. And Apoquil can be prescribed for patients with allergic itch when owners really prefer medicating at home. And again, it's useful uh, during the diagnostic workup, you can stop and start it during your flea control or food trials as needed. And here's a fear-free tip. To give oral medications to pets, have the owners condition them as a puppy to go to a designated area in the house, sort of the pilling area, um, to come to them and to sit, and then to get several tasty treats with no pills at all three or four times a week. So they just get used to that routine. And then when it comes time to give the pill, um, you can give a small treat first, and then as my friend Dobby here, Dobby is a French bulldog owned by my colleague, uh, Dr. Valerie Fadok, and um, here she is giving Dobby his Apoquel um, hidden in a, in a second treat. And then finally you get the third treat as a reward. And, and this makes pilling a lot more easy and pleasurable uh, and, and less stressful for the pet and the owner. Cytopoint is another targeted therapy. It's a canonized monoclonal antibody that targets canine IL-31. And this is a cytokine that's very important in sending the itch signal to the brain. And it gives, it's given as an in-office subcutaneous injection. And it's effective for the treatment of dogs against allergic dermatitis and atopic dermatitis. So this is a label change uh, that was done about a year ago where it's now effective against flea allergy, food allergy, contact allergy, as well as atopic dermatitis. And it starts to relieve itch within 24 hours and lasts for four to eight weeks. And this gives the skin time to heal. The most common side effects of Cytopoint were vomiting, diarrhea, and lethargy. So this is not injectable Apoquel. Sometimes I hear people say that. I was at the booth at AVMA this past weekend and someone did say that. So remember, this is an antibody therapy. It's completely different than Apoquel. And here we have Roscoe and he's a young seven month old pit bull mix who you can see on the left uh, is really suffering with allergies. These started at three months old and after failing treatments for parasites, infection and food allergy, he was put on antihistamines and steroids and neither one of these worked. And you could see he was wearing two cones, a full body suit and, and socks to really prevent this severe self trauma. And to add to Roscoe's stress and anxiety uh, and fear, he's also wearing a bark collar. Um, so of course, this is not recommended by Fear Free and committing as a team to educate this pet parent on Fear Free training principles as well as using fear-free dermatology techniques in the practice would be so helpful for Roscoe. Uh, and it's important to note that if Roscoe is barking to the point to need a bark collar, that he has an underlying behavioral anxiety condition that really needs to be addressed. And this warrants consultation with a veterinary behaviorist. So Roscoe was too young for Apico. Remember, that's 12 months age of, uh, of age is the lower limit. But he responded really well to Cytopoint, which doesn't have any age limitation. And we can see here that because Roscoe's skin is so much less itchy, 
he's a lot more comfortable. Uh, and on the right video, you saw how he was really able to bond more with his owner and doing all these tricks and, and commands. So Cytopoint is an excellent choice of therapy to reduce the burden of care for busy owners and for difficult to pill dogs or young dogs under 12 months of age. And we know that when owners are anxious and distressed about the many treatments required to manage their pet's chronic disease, and certainly allergic dermatitis or atopic dermatitis would fit in that category, this results in more phone calls and more emails uh, to you, the veterinarian and the veterinary technician, uh, and this generally increases stress in the practice. So we really wanna to commit to the diagnostic workup to determine the true cause of your canine patient's itchy skin. And a diagnosis for the cause of allergic itch is crucial. Given that this disease commonly starts at a young age and typically progresses and lasts a lifetime. And when we have a diagnosis, we can develop a long-term individual sustainable treatment plan and finding the cause of the pet's itch may give us a cure like scabies. We don't often cure things in dermatology, so we don't want to miss something like scabies. Uh, or it could allow us to develop a long-term sustainable treatment plan, such as year-round flea control for a flea allergic dog. And this keeps our pets and their caregivers off the itchy dog roller coaster. This will decrease the number of flare fires that we have to put out, uh, those derm emergency visits and the reliance on multiple treatments for control, which we all know, you know, you have 11 different treatments. Um, this is gonna decrease compliance. It's gonna increase that caregiver burden and really disrupt the household routine and, and add to that uh, anxiety and stress for the pet owner. So pursuing a diagnosis is really the most efficient and cost-effective way uh, for us to help our, our itchy patients. And when allergies are well managed, we know that that anxiety and stress decreases for the whole family. So owners whose dogs first have been given fast and effective itch relief, which of course is what they're coming to you for, are more likely to trust your recommendation to pursue that workup. And following a streamlined diagnostic approach that prioritizes making the pet comfortable, then we can address all the common causes of itch. So we can first stop the itch with a targeted therapy like Apoquel, and then we're gonna rule out parasites, treat any infections. If we need to, we'll conduct a food trial. And finally, once all of these other causes of, of clinical causes of itch have been ruled out, then we'll make that diagnosis of atopic dermatitis, and we can develop a long-term sustainable treatment plan. This is an itch tracker resource that you can use in your appointments with these itchy dogs. Uh, I really like this because it has two sides. There's a diagnostic workup guide that's showing here for you to fill out um, and it shows the streamlined diagnostic approach to owners and you can discuss your customized uh, diagnostic and treatment plan with them kind of step by step. And then the other side is an itch tracker where owners can rate and track their dog's itch level over time, and they can see how well their diagnostic trials and your treatment plan is working. And hopefully this level is kind of going down over time. We're really looking for at least a 50% improvement with any type of diagnostic trial or treatment. And if you wanna get these, just go to scienceofstrongerbonds.com and you can download all of these resources. Your Zoetis representative also has these as tear-off pads that they can give to your practice as well. So it's very important to give your patient immediate relief and give the owner peace of mind by using these targeted anti-itch treatments right from the beginning and then throughout the diagnostic workup. And this really reduces the owner anxiety and stress while starting the workup and builds the owner's trust in the whole veterinary team. So we can reach for Apoquil first line. We know it works fast. It's gonna start to reduce that allergic itch starting within four hours, and it gets the itch under control in 24 hours. Its short half-life really gives you the ability to stop and start that treatment. Uh, and this makes it really helpful for use in flea control or or food trials and throughout the diagnostic workup. 
we can use CytoPoint during the diagnostic process when we're faced with unique situations, such as a dog under 12 months of age, uh, owners who travel or have really busy schedules, uh, difficult to pill dogs. Um, when CytoPoint is effective for itch relief in these allergic dogs, it's variable duration of effect. So it can last anywhere from four to eight weeks in these dogs, does make it a little more difficult to really assess that patient's response to, to that flea control um, or an elimination diet. So the diagnostic trials, if you're using CytoPoint, would need to be extended beyond the time that you know CytoPoint lasts in that particular patient. And that's why we generally prefer Apoquil during the diagnostic workup. So let's go into that workup step by step. So parasites like fleas and mites can be treated and eliminated. And again, this is our chance to cure something. So give yourself a chance to be a hero in, in dermatology. We're gonna to wanna to perform a thorough flea combing, do our skin scrapings, and do a trial of a broad spectrum effective parasiticidal therapy. And we know that our dogs with flea allergy or scabies are often 10 out of 10 itchy, as we can see this dog here. And this severe unrelenting itch can really be distressing for the pet and the whole family. So we wanna really always rule out parasites first. Don't, don't skip step one and lay awake at night and worry that, oh my God, that dog that I have an allergy shots for the last you know, six months really have scabies. Um, we wanna make sure we rule it out first. So Apical can be used to control the itch and inflammation of flea allergy when starting that flea control trial. And this can take up to 12 weeks in some dogs to completely reduce the severe itch of flea allergy, even with our uh, newer, um, really good oral anti-parasiticidal um, therapies. So Apical's rapid action and its short half-life allows you to start it with your flea control and then about two to three days before that uh, monthly recheck, you can have the owner stop it and they can see how the pet is doing on the flea control alone. Maybe that's all they need is just that, that first four weeks of therapy. But in more severe cases, if the itch comes back, they can restart it again uh, and go another month and then repeat that throughout the, the three month period. And in this way, you can really see if your flea control is helping uh, and if that's the underlying cause for the itching. And we can do a very similar um, pattern when we're doing our food elimination diets. Repeated infections on the skin and in the ears with staph, bacteria, and malassezia yeast are really common in dogs with allergic skin disease. And these organisms can trigger our inflammatory cytokines. And of course, this worsens the itch and inflammation. And skin or ear cytology should be performed for every patient to verify the presence of infection and to help us choose the appropriate topical and systemic therapy. Consider food allergy and conduct an eight week food trial for dogs with non-seasonal itch. And we wanna do this where our parasites have been ruled out um, or we've made sure we've treated infection and the pet is still non-seasonally itchy. And in our food elimination trials, we know that 50% of the dogs will improve by about three weeks, about 85% by five weeks, and 96% by eight weeks. And a series of evidence-based reviews has been published recently in BMC Veterinary Research, and they've compiled all the last 30 years or so of, of studies on food allergy, and they've summarized their results. And I really encourage you to, to uh, go to google.com scholar and look for those reviews because they're very helpful. And we know that, it, that pet owners um, always come in and they're really believing that a grain-free diet is the best way to diagnose a food allergy. And it was interesting in one of these studies, they showed that while it's possible for dogs to be allergic to wheat or corn, this only occurs in 13% and 4% of dogs respectively. And the animal proteins are really the more common allergens. We know that serum tests, hair tests, and saliva tests are not accurate for diagnosing food allergy. And studies show that many over-the-counter foods and treats contain ingredients that are not listed on the label. So I would recommend that you use a, a prescription hydrolyzed diet such as Royal Canin Ultimino or novel protein diets made by reputable and well-known pet food companies for your food trials. 
When you're using Apical with a food trial, you can start it along with your diet. And then again, two or three days before your first four week recheck, you're gonna pull the Apical away and continue the diet and have the owner report if the itch came back. If they're one of those, you know, 50% that got better at three weeks or about 70% that gets better at four weeks, that may be all that you need to do. And you can go ahead and re-challenge with their old diet and see if the itch gets worse. And you can prove that it really was a food allergy. But if the owner says, you know, as soon as I stopped the Apical, the itch came right back, he's still eating the diet, then restart the Apical again, continue the diet for another four weeks, now you're pretty much going to get 96% of the food allergic dogs at eight weeks. And again, pull it away two or three days before that eight week recheck to see if the itch comes back. And in this way, you can keep the pet comfortable and compliant throughout that diet trial, but still be able to see if there really is a food allergy or not. Once we diagnose atopic dermatitis by ruling out all the other causes of itch, then our choice of a long-term targeted anchor treatment for allergic itch and inflammation really depends on the owner lifestyle and the needs of that individual patient. And it's important to set realistic expectations with pet owners. And I really like the 80-80 rule. And this is achievable in most dogs. And the goal is to control the pet's itch and inflammation by about 80% for 80% of the time. And to achieve that goal, we need to develop a long-term sustainable treatment plan for the individual pet and their pet parent that minimizes these allergic flares. So I like the term anchor treatment. And this was uh, developed by my friend and colleague, Dr. Andrew Hillier. And an anchor treatment is a single sustainable therapy that provides satisfactory control and it should be accepted by the patient, it should be manageable long-term for the owner, and achievable for most of your itchy dog patients. And the goal is a long-term plan to minimize these flares to maintain their comfort. And we can really reduce the anxiety and stress of the patient and their owner by helping to design this long-term plan using these fear-free techniques that is sustainable and realistic for the pet and their caregiver. I, I heard, um, one practitioner that I visited their clinic with Zoetis, we go to different um, hospitals and uh, talk about our products. And they said, you know, we love our local dermatologists. They're great, but the owners come to us crying after the visit because on average they have 10 or 11 different medications in a bag and they just, they know they can't give them all and they just don't know what to do. So that's where this anchor treatment um, theory really comes in. So periodic flares are normal. These are expected for dogs who have allergic skin disease when they're re-exposed to their allergic triggers. So these could be things like um, flea control lapses, uh, getting a bacterial or yeast infection, diet changes, um, seasonal increases in pollen counts that are just gonna send them kind of over their itch threshold. So when an owner calls to say that their targeted anti-itch medication is just not working anymore, don't give up on the current medication. Make sure you have them come back for a re-examination to check for these flare factors, such as skin infections or fleas. And once these flare factors are corrected, the medication usually goes back to working well again. And I can say the number one reason that I hear that Apical or, or Cytopoint was working great and now it's not working anymore is that the pet has gotten a bacterial or yeast infection that the owner hasn't recognized. And once that's treated appropriately, uh, the medications go back to working just fine. So in cases where uh, all of these flare factors are ruled out and the flare is due to a seasonal pollen spike, you can actually combine these medications to get your patient back on track. And Cytopoint can be given in cases of flares where a dog was previously controlled by Apical alone uh, and vice versa. So one can be layered on top of the other to provide more control of the itch and inflammation during these seasonal flares. And in the Cytopoint pivotal safety study, 53 out of the 162 dogs or 32% that were receiving Cytopoint also received Apoquil during that study. And the study concluded that there was no clinically apparent adverse interaction between Cytopoint and any of the other concomitantly administered medications, including Apoquil. 
So consider site a point when recurrence of a previously controlled itch occurs. For example, you have a diagnosed flea or food allergic dog and they sort of fall off the wagon um, and they need sustained itch control when returning to their restricted diet or regular flea control. And this is a really nice, helpful resource that you can give pet owners to help them prepare when their pet has a flare of itch. And again, this is available from the scienceofstrongerbonds.com under resources. I really encourage you to go to that website, all kinds of great resources there. And here we can see that they can rate their dog's itch level using the scale shown. And there's guidance on the next steps when they notice a flare. And there's also an area that you can write notes on uh, or they can um, write notes on the observations of their pet's itch, and they can bring that back to the appointment. So an example of a long-term sustainable treatment plan for dogs with atopic dermatitis would be using that anchor treatment with that targeted therapy to control the itch and inflammation. So this could be Apoquel, it could be Cytopoint, it could be Cyclosporin. Uh, this is really the most important treatment. And then there's other supportive treatments that we want to consider. So year-round flea control uh, with one of the oral isoxazoline products, weekly bathing with an antibacterial, antifungal, or a hypoallergenic moisturizing shampoo, and sometimes I'll alternate those uh, in certain cases, and then using a mousse, a wipe, or a spray two or three times a week over the known problem area. So this is very proactively preventing infection weekly ear cleaning and maintenance ear medication in dogs that need this, uh, that tend to be prone to ear medication. So sometimes our hydrocortisone containing drying ear medications uh, like Zymox HC or Hydro Plus or uh, with Burl's solution can really be helpful in keeping these ears under control. Feeding a high fatty acid barrier repair diet such as Hill's Derm Defense or Royal Canin Skin Support. Um, or a hypoallergenic diet if they're food allergic. And then finally, allergen immunotherapy injections or oral drops to help normalize that immune, um, that immune reaction. So most dogs are not gonna need all of these treatments and many will do well um, just on the targeted anchor therapy and the flea control alone. Uh, and this is gonna definitely reduce that caregiver burden. But you can individualize that maintenance therapy depending on what that pet needs. And your technicians can coach the pet owner at the time of these treatment recommendations in giving these treatments using fear-free techniques. And this really helps to ensure success in reducing fear, anxiety, and stress, which will help make these treatments more sustainable long-term. And other, we always know, you know, this will work for, you know, 90% of our patients, but sometimes we'll get a more severe, non-seasonal, progressive case, and these are gonna require you know, more of an intensive, multimodal supportive therapy uh, for their long-term control. And, and these kind of cases are really best managed by a, a boarded dermatologist. And a published study in veterinary dermatology showed that owners of well-controlled dermatology patients um, had the same caregiver burden as those with a healthy dog and that this measure really correlated well with the pet owner quality of life. So keeping them on this preventative maintenance program and keeping them under control really improves the quality of life for everyone. So here's another fear-free dermatology tip. Um, we know that dogs with recurrent skin infections often benefit from regular bathing and topical therapy as we talked about. And um, there's companies like Aquapaw, that we can see here and the Lick Lick mat that we can see here. And these are suction-based slow feeder adhesive plates and you can apply these to the wall of the tub. And these provide food-based ba restraint because you can smear these with peanut butter or spray cheese. And this really helps keep the dog distracted and not you know, trying to jump out of the tub the whole time because they're licking the wall, uh, they're licking one of these pads um, as the owner is bathing the patient. So you can use this in your clinic. Uh, if you have a groomer, they can use this. Um, and we can also advise our, our pet owners to use this at home. Another tip is to use these long lasting commercial otopacks or thermal activated ear hydrogels. And these can help reduce the fear, anxiety of stress of frequently applying these ear medications. 
Another tip that I found um, from a, actually from a pet owner was that when they're putting the ear medication in, put the pet in the tub and put one of these um, lick lick pads um, on the wall and have them um, licking that as you're putting the ear medication in. So the tub kind of restrains them and then they're distracted by these pads. So I thought that was a good tip too. So by communicating the realistic expectations on the lifelong nature of atopic dermatitis, we can minimize the stress of flares with a, a tailored sustainable treatment plan. And if we do this, then most atopic dogs can lead healthy and comfortable lives. Remember August is Itchy Pet Awareness Month, so get your practice and your staff ready. Go to thescienceofstrongerbonds.com to download your whole practice toolkit under resources. So thank you so much for listening. Um, you as the patient's veterinary professional are the best partner for pet parents to provide this real relief for your canine patient's itchy skin. And we know that your patients deserve the comfort of controlling their itchy allergic skin disease and your pet owners deserve the peace of mind that goes with itch relief for their best friend. And itch relief can restore the special bond between the pet and their pet parent. And it's gonna strengthen the bond between the owner and your whole practice team. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosenbaum. That was fantastic. And um, that is all we have time for. Thank you again to everyone for being with us and to Zoetta's Pet Care for making this presentation possible. Uh, for those attending the live webinar, I will be sending out the CE email in a few minutes. And if you do not receive it in the next half hour or so, please email me at fearfreepets at gmail.com, uh, not, not the regular Fear Free customer service email. Email it to me. Um, and the sur CE survey is only open until Monday, so please take it right away. Are you tired of me reminding you of this? Uh, thanks again, and we hope to see you for the next two dermatology webinars in September and October. And thanks so much, everyone, and please have a great rest of your day.